What up and welcome to Something by Brian. I'm Brian and today I'm back with another draw with me. And as you might have seen from the title, I'm discussing art blocks in this one and how to deal with them and what to do if you're suffering from one. And why am I doing this now? Well, that's because uh, if you're if you've seen any of my content, it's pretty much based around pop culture and movies and such. I find huge inspiration in the movies that entertain me. They inspire me to create what I do here. And uh, the drawing you're watching me create is, uh, is made in January. And January is sort of infamous for lacking great movie releases. It's sort of a dump dump month for the big studios where they put out projects that they're not very confident in. So there's not really that much new movie content to watch and therefore there isn't that many new movies that inspire me in January. So that uh, that made me yeah, that that made me stumble a bit and wonder why what am I creating? What am I to draw? And when I'm in doubt, I like to do what, what you're seeing right now. I do four thumbnail sketches that uh, luckily for me, uh, in my creative slump, I remembered that my favorite podcast uh, can celebrate their 10 year anniversary this year. So I, I wanted to do a little fan, fan art piece for them. Um, so so I started uh, sketching out these these four little thumbnails before deciding on which one I liked the most or which one to go forward with. And I do this because sometimes your first idea isn't necessarily your best idea and if you're if you don't if you don't create an entire drawing like from scratch to finish project but if you just sketch it out you can you can see that the idea you had in your head, but maybe you can't really get the composition right, or you just, it doesn't end up quite how you envision it. And and that's why I like to do these four little sketches. Like this, these four sketches are all with the same frame of mind with the podcast and their content and the hosts uh, in focus. That's what I wanted to emphasize in this drawing, but the, the four different drawings I'm creating here are, are really different and uh, and I think that helps me a lot to to workshop ideas and get over yeah, get over myself and get out of my way you know if you I thought the the idea with the two faces of the hosts that that was that was what I was gonna do but uh, when I saw it I was like nah I, it's too reminiscent of various rom-com posters and and I didn't quite like it and then I was like well what do they talk about and they talk about pop culture and movies but also comic books so I went with the comic book theme for both the the second and also here the fourth and final sketch where the the the, the second one was uh, was a, a cover a, a comic cover and the fourth one here is a uh, is how I envisioned they started their podcasting journey in comic form. Um, so yeah, that's how I deal with with how I want to create when I don't really know what to create. If you go back through my catalog of videos here, I think it's for the Venom or maybe Let There Be Carnage. I can't remember which Venom movie, but for my Venom movies, uh, draw view. I did this process too, and I was sure that I was gonna go with the second uh, sketch until I finished the fourth sketch, and I was blown away uh, with how cool it looked in my mind, at least. Uh, and it came out of nowhere, and it's just—it's a wonderful way to just doodle and get out of your own way and experimenting a bit with ideas. But yeah, now you can see I—I I chose the comic front cover page as the final sketch for this. Um, but yeah, also here in the beginning of the year, there's a lot of resolutions and stuff on, we put a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on ourselves and that doesn't really, it's not really necessary for the first of all, no, no one, no one really cares <laughs> except yourself. 
uh, but that's also adding to possible blocks you can experience like I want to create a drawing every single day if you put that sort of pressure on yourself you can you can burn out really really fast because maybe you had great ideas for the first first four days but what about that fifth day what about the tenth day and what about the second month and then suddenly you're left with this this huge feeling of disappointment instead of this great enjoyment that we take in creating things because that's the weird part of creative blocks like they happen to every creative i've ever talked to be it musicians or writers or artists like myself we all experience them and it's weird because we so want to create but suddenly it's just that blank piece of paper it's the scariest thing ever and resolutions and such that comes with new years they just don't add anything to it at least not for me so i've always tried to to keep my creative endeavors out of any promises i want to create for the fun of it and for my love of it and not just not just creating for creation's sake if that makes any sense but yeah um i think that people experience art blocks uh, due to different reasons of course but mainly mostly at least that's just for me but you're not motivated to create or you, you don't know what to create and that's actually why i started doing this youtube channel way back when because i wanted to create more but i was always just i didn't know what to draw and i was terrible at finishing my drawings I would start a drawing and I would sketch and have fun with it and then all of a sudden I would just yeah just open a new blank page and start from scratch and I have so many drawings I've never returned to but but that that um, but returning to those could be a fun endeavor too in its own right and I I might return to that later in this video but um not knowing what to create is is horrible and and I'm I was so glad when I finally figured out that hey what if I what if I could I could do this random movie review stuff because I watch a lot of movies and and then instead of putting my face out there like a lot of the other movie reviewers I could do some fan art and then I have been doing that ever since I started this channel so I'm very pleased with myself in that regard I have multiple times uh, lowered uh, no, lowered the output of what I'm creating. Like uh, in the beginning, I wanted to do way more videos than I'm doing, um, but uh, I simply couldn't manage the time well enough. And uh, and that's what I'm talking about too. Like, don't let that hinder you, or don't let that be a disappointing fact. Don't let that disappoint you, or take you out of it just push through stuff like that and then alter your methods and and then be pleased with what you create and not what you didn't create there's always stuff we didn't create and we can always look to others and be like damn that's great but i wish i did that but don't don't focus too much energy on on you know comparing yourself to others it's great to find inspiration and looking up artists artists that inspire you but don't compare yourself directly to their output or their their style because that that'll lead to burnout as well you have to create what you want to create how you create it unless you're doing a study or something of course um but yeah so that's that's one way to stay motivated and, and figure out what to draw, like figure out a project to be it a comic or to illustrate a children's book or yeah, do fan art for stuff you like, but make it like a project and not just, oh, today I feel like doing this and then tomorrow I might feel like doing something else because that would, for me at least, that leads to a, a lot of unfinished drawings and unfinished drawings never feels good to me. Uh, they they stare back at me with disappointing eyes 
uh, just longing to be finished. So it helped me tremendously to figure out a way to make it a project and make it something I could put into a, well, not a schedule because schedule is sort of demotivating as well sometimes, but make it something you could look forward to doing uh, instead of making it feel like a something sour that you have to do, like the dishes or something. Um, another great way to get motivated is there, uh, of course, commissions. Money is a great motivator. <laughs> Uh, also because they are always something you haven't thought to create and that can be really challenging and a challenge is often very stimulating and therefore it's just very fun to have someone you don't know or a friend of yours commission a piece where they're like I want to see this horse dine at a Starbucks but instead of a cup of coffee I would like him to eat a cake made out of the planet Jupiter like that's not something I would draw just I know that I just came up with it uh, but you get the you get the point that's not something that would come naturally to me and be something like yeah I'm gonna do that I'm gonna draw that but if someone were like hey I would love this drawing to give to my girlfriend or aunt or keep for myself uh, I would be happy to help a person with that because I have the the, the skills to to provide them with that piece of content that little little piece of art and that's a great motivator at least for me I think it's fun to do commissions um, other great ways to get motivated but it's also a bit of a, a dangerous one at least for myself is uh, challenges there's so many different art challenges and like daily little TikTok hacks and TikTok challenges, but also month long drawing challenges like Inktober or Mermaid or Drawgust or yeah, the list goes on. I think there's a, this great YouTuber, he's, he's called uh, Subjectively, is his uh, channel. I'll link it below. Um, I think he does one almost every single month or, or at least like every second and he he, he always picks a theme and then go like uh, this December he did D in December and then you had to roll different characters and then you had to draw them and I I partook in that and I always always fail in uh, completing uh, like the full month I've never once completed one I think I have a video up on my channel as well with the uh, 2022 mermaid where I think I got 14 14 of the of the mermaid mermaids but um and that's why it's dangerous for me because uh, to me that's hugely disappointing I would love to do all of them uh, that's why I try to challenge myself to partake to actually finish this huge challenge but uh, I just have to be, be real and I, I can't manage my time well enough I have a I have a little son who demands a lot of attention and that's totally fine and I don't want to feel bad about taking care of him so I I do try to partake in these but I won't I won't let it kill me if if I miss a day or a half half a month in these challenges which were the case for both the December and the mermaid and I can't remember the last time I I did I took part in a Inktober but I love them also because I actually Inktobers I do try to stay with the with the traditional medium and that's rare for me these days I usually just do digital art now because it's uh, like an infinite sketchbook I just sit on the couch and draw whatever my heart desire while binging ridiculous stuff on the various services. So that's just, I don't need uh, to have a sketchbook or an eraser. I just have this wonderful piece of tech. But with, in with Inktober, I like, to, I like to go back to the roots and find some paper and a good, good marker and a good multi-liner and just put pen to paper but um, 
if you don't feel like monthly challenges either uh, or if you are like me and rarely complete them and therefore feel intimidated by them there's also uh, well yeah subjectively as I just mentioned he does sometimes uh, very specific art prompts and challenges and uh, Jassa and 1000 you definitely know these guys if you found my little nook of YouTube you've definitely seen these enormous art channels but they they've both done um, art challenges and character design prompts uh, throughout their careers and do them somewhat regularly and also with huge prizes if you were to win um, um, Christian Pearson over at Popcross Studios he does a monthly a monthly uh, community challenge in which he gives out very very different prompts sometimes it's just uh, create a new Pokemon and sometimes it's envision yourself as a spider spider sona or other times he has created this entire universe multiverse thing uh, in which he's created so many characters and then you get to create original characters for this ever expanding universe he's working on it's it's pretty cool actually uh, so I can strongly re recommend uh, checking all of them out and subscribing to their stuff if you feel like ever partaking in challenges and such because they're they're pretty good at, at the prompt part it's uh, it's weird stuff uh, 1000 did one this last fall I think where you were to create a character or a person and he did it through a random generator prompt and it was just the weirdest description of the person and the weirdest character uh, I've ever drawn I think uh, and it's just fun to partake in a challenge like that because it usually engages the entire community so you feel less isolated and you can talk to people about what challenges they're facing or if they're finding it hard to get started and such and for me at least uh, art blocks feel better if they're experienced together if that makes any sense just knowing that you're not the only one sitting there not knowing what to do or hating everything you're getting done and starting over all the time if you can comment that on a video and be like ah I can't get this to look the way I want and then a lot of other people just jump on in and go, yeah me too yeah I'm struggling too like that sort of that's sort of comforting you know so that's also something you can do against art blocks be verbal about them like don't don't be whiny and such but you can definitely just let let people know that right now creating stuff is more difficult than usually and I'm having a hard time getting getting shit done and that's totally okay and mostly people will be very supportive when you are vulnerable like that and be like yeah that's cool I, I get that too I, I experience those but they always pass so so chin up it'll it'll pass for you too and stuff like that and that's nice uh, strangers being nice on the internet is always nice <laughs> that's at least what I find um, but also that's uh, that, that's my thoughts on getting motivated or not knowing what to create so I've also I think some things that can also be difficult when when we're talking about art blocks is that they can arrive when you're not creating what you envisioned like if you had this cool idea in your head and it's just not turning out the way you wanted it to that sucks uh, I won't lie that always sucks you can you can check out my late my last draw with me that was pretty much my entire experience with that drawing uh, but as I did in that video, and as I've already stated here, to me at least, it's important to complete the piece. Because if you don't, that becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy and just a spiral of negative thoughts. Uh, so I have to, 
I have to complete my pieces at least. But I don't know. I don't know if that's sound advice. I don't know if that's for everybody. Uh, like if you've done something and you really hate it, maybe don't force yourself to continue doing it. Um, but I think there's still, for me at least, it helps getting a, a drawing done. And then at least you can be like, it ain't pretty, it ain't what I wanted it to be, but it's done. And I'm proud that it's done and now I can move forward. Instead of having like skeletons in your closet and being like, oh, it's full of these half-assed finished drawings that I kind of sort of hate. Uh, that doesn't feel good, at least to me. I would rather have a somewhat poor finished drawing than just a lot of bad sketches. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me. Let me know if you feel like that too. Um, but if you're struggling with getting the look, the exact look that you wanted or doing exactly what you had in mind, uh, I would recommend maybe doing a study or even a trace of some artist that inspires you or a piece you really like. Um, of course, uh, don't trace just to trace and never just post your trace without giving credit to the original artist. Um, but there's, there's so much uh, learning and wisdom to be had in tracing. Um, and of course, when we feel comfortable not tracing in a regular study, it's so rewarding looking to an artist you admire and trying to really analyze their style and how they how they made you feel the way you felt when you saw their drawing. Um, it's imperative, I would even say, that you do this sometimes. Not even not just as a solution for art blocks, but as a as a learning mechanism. Because it's just, it makes you really think about what you're lacking, which skills you know you don't possess well enough to do what that artist did for you. And the way you achieve those is with a study. Uh, like Adam Murphy, he's an, an incredibly talented uh, artist uh, who's been working for Disney and such. His Instagram is absolutely, absolutely spectacular. Some of the prettiest stuff I've ever seen. And his stuff looks so effortless. So effortless. I'm always, always envious whenever he posts anything. So that was the uh, my d and December. I tried to combine two of these thoughts. I tried to be like, okay, I'll partake in this monthly challenge, but I'll do it. Uh, while trying to emulate and learn Adam Murphy's simple art. And I failed at both, but it still made me confront aspects of my drawing that I'm not entirely satisfied with and may make me question why, why is that? And maybe when you're experiencing an, an art block, what you wouldn't be like, oh, I want to sit down and critique my own work because I'm already... It's, it's, uh, I'm already having troubles figuring out what to draw, what to draw, but it can be very beneficial, and and can get you actually motivated to be like, oh yeah, I see, I see what he's doing there now. I I get what I'm missing. I I see what my drawings are lacking. I want to try this out immediately. So that's that's at least uh, I think that that works sometimes. For me, sometimes you just, yeah, it, it, it depends on the art block as well. Sometimes they don't last for more than a day. Sometimes it's a month. I don't know. I haven't had one for that long, but sometimes it's just really hard to put pen to paper. And then if you find an artist that inspires you, it's just really, really satisfactory to figure out why they're doing that and then trying to see if you can do that yourself. Um, and also, if you're having problems creating what you're envisioned, don't envision. Don't, just turn off your brain and put pen to paper or uh, to iPad or whatever drawing tablet you use and just draw 
don't draw characters or landscapes just draw shapes and lines and in different colors and patterns and it's sort of like a warm-up exercise as well you can do it for that but it's also freeing it's it's freeing your mind and your thoughts from the pressures that you put on yourself. That this weird little abstract sketch thingy, it's just for me. I'm not gonna post it anywhere. I'm not even gonna show my sibling. I'm just gonna do it for me. And I'm just, I'm not gonna think about what I'm drawing. I'm just gonna draw. I'm gonna try out all these brushes and I'm gonna draw squares and suddenly you have this cool pattern and before you know it maybe you're starting to color it in and shading it and it's just a really fluid way to like circumvent an art block because suddenly it, you, it's it's hard at the beginning. It's like, oh, may what should I draw? This squiggly line. Maybe I should just undo it or erase it. It's just don't. Don't remove anything. Whatever gets on the paper is on the paper. And then you work with it. And you start to see that sometimes what were perceived as obstacles can actually be guidelines or tools for new paths that you hadn't thought about. And for this weird little squibbly abstract piece, that's not necessarily that important, but it is a great lesson to learn for whenever you're doing your real pieces and your proper art, that maybe if you made a mistake, but whoa, maybe that was actually a really cool texture to use in the background and not just a, a wrong brush selection, or maybe that pose that you sketched in, maybe that's actually, it isn't too, too messed up. It's just some real cool, cool foreshortening and in really dynamic. And learning to see those opportunities, that's pretty important too. And I think this exercise is really good for that. Um, I don't do it as frequently as I'd like to, but I always have fun whenever I just squibble. It's it's always exciting in the end. It's not that thrilling in the beginning, but in the end it, in, it, it always ends up cool. That's at least my thought. Um, I think the last, the last reason I get art blocks is uh, a pretty big one like it's hard to discuss and just just uh, talk your way out of it but it's if you're feeling down you just don't feel like drawing that's pretty hard to overcome at times and to me at least it's it's those art blocks that you don't you don't necessarily confront them with exercises or drawing challenges or the other stuff I've talked about so far. For those, when you're just like in a slump and yeah, you just, you walk away from that paper, you, you do something else. You go for a long walk, you make a cup of tea, you watch a movie or read a book or whatever you find enjoyment in and and you take a break because creating when you're down is it's not a, necessarily a good headspace it can be overwhelming and the negative thoughts of why isn't my art turning out how I like and why isn't this looking better and why is this person always better than me stuff like that it comes very easily when when you're feeling down and it's just not beneficial for anybody it doesn't make you feel good it doesn't help the art block go away it's just 
annoying, like deeply <laughs> annoying, and that's that's when you should just walk away and be like, no, I'm not gonna draw today. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something else, something that makes me feel better than than how I'm feeling right now, and and that's okay too. That's not something that you should feel bad about or that you should be like, oh, I procrastinated. Because that I, I think it's that's different. That's two different things. And I, I should know I'm very good at procrastinating. Um But this this is like a, this is some mental health stuff. Like if you're feeling down, don't fe don't feel pressured by yourself or anyone to deliver something that you don't feel comfortable with or that you don't find enjoyment in doing. Uh, that's and that's okay. It's okay to be like, no, I'm gonna take a break today. I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn in early and go to sleep or or whatever brings you comfort and makes you feel better. And when you are in a better headspace, then then you can do some exercises I've already discussed about. And as I mentioned, the half finished uh, sketches and old pieces that you aren't that pleased with they can actually be a fun a fun place to go back to when when experiencing this and be like I don't know what to do with this new piece let me open up one of these one of these pieces that I didn't finish or that I'm not entirely satisfied with and see how much I've improved since and then start reworking them and see what it what other art pieces were hiding in those old pieces and that's just that's usually pretty fun to to find that a drawing that you might have hated or really really felt disappointed by where you were like this should have been so much better well then put it down and then in half a year a year's time maybe you find it in a folder and are like hey I've I've improved a lot since then but I'm still feeling really annoyed by this stupid drawing I'm trying to get out maybe I should just warm up by reworking this one that's super fun usually because when you remove yourself from your pieces you're you're not as connected to them like emotionally they don't mean as much to you as as a piece you're currently or recently finished with but if it's like a year old drawing that's you that you totally forgot about that you had made then it's just fun it's like yeah drawing on faces in magazines if people still do that <laughs> yeah I just I love I love that uh, whenever I find a an old folder from when I was in school and I'm like, whoa, this drawing is so old, I can't remember why I did this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up. And then just have fun with it. Sort of mix it with the exercise I talked about before with just the squibbly lines and the abstract stuff. Try coloring in weird shapes, try doing really dramatic lighting and just push the drawing in whatever direction. And like push it hard it's it's all always fun and almost always educational in some way so that's uh, I think that's uh, my main my main thoughts on the issue of art block I think the worst and best advice I've said I've, I've saved that for last is uh, don't worry about it too much and it's a great advice because usually they always go away the art blocks sooner or later they disappear either by themselves or by some of the stuff I've been talking about like but sooner or later they will disappear and you will create again and take enjoyment in it uh, but it's a horrible advice because it's the worst thing to hear. <laughs> it's uh, it's nothing you really can act upon. It's nothing you can do anything about. Don't worry. 
if you worry, you worry. It's hard to turn that off. I know I myself is a worrying kind of guy, but if you can manage to, that is definitely a more pleasurable headspace to be in for yourself and for people around you, and it will help in making the art block go away faster. Um, that's at least my experience. So I do believe that those are my main thoughts on this issue. I hope that it has been entertaining to hear and I hope that it has been rewarding or educational and I'd love to hear in the comments if you agree with any of my theories or methods or if you think I'm way off because I, I don't know psychology and stuff. This is just what my experience from how I create. Um, but it's been fun to talk about and I thought it was I thought it, it was somewhat topical with the yeah with this drawing that I ended up really loving by the way sorry I haven't talked about this drawing at all but I'm really really pleased with how this turned out um, and you should definitely check out the podcast that I'm celebrating in this piece the weekly planet uh, there's 10 years of content so if you don't know it, you should just get on it. It's movies, it's it's movies, it's pop culture, it's comics, and it's two Australian boys just being absolute goofs while delivering some really reliable and fun news. So yeah, thanks for listening to this. I do hope to see you back here. And if you like the drawing, consider liking the video. And if you like the video, consider subscribing. Thanks, take care.